we were at Seth's energy conference mm-hmm. in Tampa, and I had a cup of coffee with a guy who, based on back of the napkin, probably has a twenty million dollar business. That's probably what he would sell it for today. Mm-hmm. He's got nothing else. Yeah, and he's got a mortgage on his house. Like he's literally dumped everything he has into this thing. I mean, he is all in. That thing blows up tomorrow. He's going to be in the soup line. Mm-hmm. And so, what do you say to a guy like that who says, "Well, Paul, I might be interested in selling this year. I might be interested in selling next year. I might be interested in selling five years from now. I'm not sure. I'm trying to develop a relationship with you because I want to understand what it is that I need to do, and I want to be best positioned for when I ultimately pull the trigger." What do you say to a guy like that who says, Nick, I don't even know why I need to talk to you because I literally have shit. I don't have mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. I've got you know, 100 grand in my bank account. Now I have a valuable business, mm-hmm. but there's nothing for you to manage. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good question. But the reason they need to talk to me is because one, I can help them process that decision, mm-hmm. right? So taking these personal factors, taking the scenario analysis and the business factors Mm -hmm. into consideration to help them process that decision. Because I don't know about you, but I think a lot of folks that I've spoken to, they have information and they have ideas going and bubbling around in their head Mm -hmm. and they never put pen to paper on what that actually looks like, right? So they hear about risk, right? And they don't necessarily put down, okay, if I sell now, I can get 15 times EBITDA, but if I sell in two years and the multiple's 10 times EBITDA. What does that actually look like? What does like? that actually look like, yeah. right? Like you say I'm getting 20 million now, does that mean I'm getting 10? Does that mean I'm getting 15, yep. right? Because it's not quantitatively based. And so by making it that way, it just crystallizes you know, what risks they're actually taking mm-hmm. under different circumstances or scenarios, okay? And then I also ask questions to help them understand all right, your business is X revenue right now, mm-hmm. and there's a certain de- certain types of skills that you had to deploy in order to get to that level, and you've, you've done great. You got your business to that level. Most people don't do that. But are those the same skills that are going to take you to $10 million in revenue, to $30 million in revenue? Because if you hold on to this business for 10 years like you say you're going to, you're going to need to deploy those skills. Yep. And so who are you hiring? How are you developing yourself and your team in order to do that? And I think that point typically raises some eyebrows and mm-hmm. opens people's eyes to like, yeah, that's true. Like my current market can't absorb that type of growth. Like I can't get to that level of route density where I operate. So I'm gonna have to open two new branch locations. Do I wanna do that? What does that mean for the time I'm going to be able to spend with my wife and my kids if I do do that, right? So just having those personal conversations, I think puts some specificity around it and also um, helps them understand, I guess, some of the personal dynamics um, created there within.